Let's talk about fire kits. When hiking, camping, or just enjoying the outdoors, it's always a good idea to make a comprehensive fire kit a part of your regular loadout. In this video, I will be discussing the things I keep in my fire kit, and as a bonus, I'll be showing you a way to combine two simple ingredients to easily make fire without any spark, electricity, or any heat source whatsoever. Finally, we're going to be doing a free giveaway, and instructions for entry will be at the end of the video, so stay tuned and find out what's in my fire kit. I know you told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way And guess you're trying to stay strong and Fire is essential for survival And humans have enjoyed the ability to make fire for quite some time now It provides heat to cook food and boil water It provides necessary warmth in cold weather It provides light wards off predators, and can be used for signaling, as well as a morale booster. Therefore, it is critical that you keep some form of fire kit with you anytime you are camping, hiking, or traveling in the outdoors. In a previous video, I noted that I always have some way of making fire as part of my everyday carry. Usually, it's just a bit lighter, but when I travel or go hiking or backpacking, camping or bushcrafting, I always bring a fire kit with me, which provides several surefire ways to produce a flame and with tinder to extend that flame. In order to make a fire, you have to have a trifecta of materials, heat, fuel, and oxygen. Imagine a triangle, three equal sides, too much of one, not enough of another, and the whole thing topples over. Fire works the same way. The first component of fire, heat, which is usually a flame or a spark, will ignite your tinder, which ignites kindling. Now, tinder is a highly combustible material that's used to start a fire, but it burns very quickly and it doesn't really sustain well. Kindling is the material used to sustain the fire until it's built up enough to burn your fuel, which is usually your firewood. Oxygen, which is the third component, feeds the fire that consumes the fuel and makes more heat. Okay, so let's get the contents of my fire kit out onto the table and we can talk about it. Nice. So in any fire kit, it's important to have several methods to make fire. This is the kit that I keep in my pack and I keep a similar one in my vehicle. The pouch is just a small repurposed admin pouch. I'm not really sure where I got this. Uh, I try to repurpose things as often as possible. Uh, so let's go over the items that are inside the pouch. So the first item is a bandana. I, it's an ordinary cloth, you know, cotton bandana. There's nothing particularly special about it. Uh, I like using a bright colored bandana because it doubles as a uh, signal device. You can use it as a signal flag. And uh, I use it to lay it on the ground while processing my tinder material so it doesn't get damp. Depending on your materials, even a small amount of moisture can be enough to ruin your fire before it gets going. And it also helps in tinder collection. You can use it as sort of a little bundling device. So bandana is the first item in the fire kit. Next item is aluminum foil. I keep a couple of pieces of aluminum foil in my kit. They're folded up. I'm not going to unfold them now, but uh, they're probably about uh, eight by four. And I use the foil to lay on the ground to start the fire if the ground is wet. Uh, it provides a base to protect the fire from moisture, and it also helps to reflect the heat to get the fire going. You can also use the, the silver foil to help move coals or embers from one place to another and place it in your fire lay. So that's silver foil. The next item I keep in my kit is a small folding knife. Uh, it's very important to keep a sharp knife in your fire kit in order to process materials, uh, both tinder and kindling. We're going to go over that more in a minute. So I keep a small folding knife in the kit. The next item I keep is a small bellows that comes in this little tube. I'll take it out. And what it is, is basically it's an extending aluminum tube that will allow you to blow into the fire from far away. So you don't have to put your face into the fire if you need to get embers going or coals going. Uh, this is a great tool, very, very lightweight, uh, take, doesn't take up very much space at all, and it is an absolute lifesaver. Uh, in a situation where you need to get a fire going and you, you really don't want to put your face all the way into it. It's about, I would say about, uh, 
it's probably about 15 inches long. So it gives you a pretty, pretty decent reach. And it, like I said, it comes in this little tube, very convenient. So the bellows. The next item I keep in the kit is some wire. Uh, this is copper wire. Sometimes I use uh, picture frame wire. It doesn't really matter what kind. Uh, I use it for a couple of different purposes. You can use it to bale logs or splits together to make a Swedish torch, which is going to be the subject of another video. Uh, you can also use it to hang a cooking pot uh, or boil water, you know, in a steel bottle. So having a little bit of wire is a good idea. Uh, this is probably about uh, 10 or 12 feet when you uncoil it. So some wire. The last utility item I keep in the fire kit is a small multi-tool. I use this primarily for wire cutting, and I also use the pliers to remove certain kinds of items from a fire, like a, a can or a pot or something else that might not have a handle. This is a Leatherman squirt. Uh, it's very small, lightweight, does the job, and uh, I strongly recommend you have some kind of multi-tool. I usually have a large Leatherman anyway, but this always stays in the fire kit. All right, let's talk about fire making. Unless I'm teaching a class, 95% of my fires get started with an ordinary Bic lighter. They're inexpensive, they're easily obtained, and they're very reliable. And there are a few ways to modify your lighter to make it a little bit better. First, I recommend you get a bright colored lighter. Get a yellow one or a pink one or a white one. It'll be a lot more difficult to lose it in, uh, in the dark or you know, in, in the grass or wherever you are, if you're out in the woods and you drop a, a black lighter at night, good luck finding it. Second thing is, um, I recommend you wrap a rubber band around the top of the lighter and underneath the gas plunger. The reason for this is it will prevent the plunger from discharging the gas unintentionally while it's in your kit and then you're left with an empty lighter. Uh, and despite the fact that the rubber band's there, you can still flick the lighter and, and light it. So. It's a good idea to put a rubber band there. Also, that way you have an extra rubber band in case you need it. Uh, I usually remove these child uh, safety, whatever this gizmo is over here. You can easily do that by just sticking a, um, either the end of a knife or a screwdriver underneath and you can just pry it off. And uh, it's not a bad idea to keep a little bit of duct tape on the lighter. Um, I have some duct tape here. It's a good fire extender and excellent tinder. Uh, the last thing is, even when this lighter runs out and it doesn't have any butane fuel, you can still use it to make sparks, and it's a little bit more difficult than a ferro rod, but it, the sparks will get certain things lit pretty easily, so lighter. The next fire-making item are waterproof matches. These are uh, sometimes called uh, lifeboat matches or hurricane matches. These are made by Yuko. Uh, they're very reliable. Uh, they burn, they have a pretty long burn time, probably about 10 or 15 seconds. They burn very hot. The nice thing about these matches is they burn even if they're completely submerged underwater. And I keep them in this bag with a uh, couple of strikers. So, hurricane matches. Okay, so first we've got the lifeboat matches. I've submerged it in water. It's about as wet as it's gonna get. I take it out. Good luck getting it. There we go. Shake it off. Match lights right up. Submerge it in water. Lights back up again. Lifeboat matches from Yuko. Lights back up. The next fire making item is really a spark making item. It's a ferrocium rod and steel, or sometimes referred to as a ferro rod. There are a number of techniques to make sparks. Um, a good ferro rod will throw off sparks that are somewhere in the neighborhood of 3000 degrees. Uh, you can also shave the material off the ferro rod into a small pile and then strike into the material to make a much hotter, longer burning flame. Uh, this particular ferro rod is a pretty good size. It's uh, about six inches and I think it's about three quarters of an inch thick 
or maybe five sixteenths, I'm not sure. I also wrap this one with a little bit of duct tape, so this way I have some more duct tape if I need tinder, and it also acts as a pretty good handle. And the striker that comes on this one is nice. It's got a little ruler on it. It's uh, centimeters and millimeters. It's got a scraping tool at the end, and it also has a bottle opener and a uh, hex key. And the striker, I don't know if you can see that. These throw up some serious sparks, and we're going to be talking about that more in a minute. So, a ferro rod. The next item up is called a blast match. Uh, what this is, is it's actually a ferrocium rod, which is uh, contained within this little gizmo here. You pop it out, and now you might ask yourself, well, I already have a big ferro rod, what do I need this for? Well, a little bit of redundancy is nice, but also, this is a ferro rod that you can operate with one hand. Now, I came across this uh, not too long ago when I injured my right hand, and I, I mean, I, I really hurt it bad, I couldn't close it. And I tried making a fire with a ferro rod, it was impossible. I couldn't grip the rod, I couldn't grip the striker. And I realized that if I had a ferro rod, I, I simply wouldn't be able to do it. This allows you to make sparks one-handed. It's not as good as a big ferro rod, but it'll definitely throw off some serious sparks. There you go. And, um... If you're injured and you're in a survival situation, this can be an absolute lifesaver because it gives you the ability to start a fire one-handed if you have no other method to do so. So, blast match. The next item is a Fresnel lens. Uh, this is great for starting fires with the sun's rays. It's not that easy to do it. Uh, the big downside to it is that it's basically just a magnifying glass but you need a sunny day for it to work. So if it's overcast or raining or at the nighttime, you know, this is not going to be a viable option for you. Uh, on the other hand, it also helps you read the fine print in case you run into some lawyers in the wilderness. So Fresnel lens. And finally, the bonus fire making method, thing one and thing two. We'll be discussing this more at the end, but these are two inert, common, non-toxic substances that when mixed together will cause combustion. You can enter our contest to win a free ferro rod. I will talk about that more at the end. Thing one, thing two. So let's talk about Tinder. The first item of Tinder that I keep in my kit are Tinder tabs. These are small cotton tabs that have been impregnated with wax. Um, I, I purchased these, but you can easily make these yourself. Uh, these Tinder tabs are actually, I think, uh, part of regular uh, army issue for uh, the soldier's fire kits. They fluff open very easily, and uh, they take a spark very, very well, whether it's a uh, spark from a lighter, a spark from a ferro, rather, actually a flame from a lighter, spark from a ferro rod, or from some other source. Um, you basically open them up, you fluff them up a little bit, and you hit them with a ferro rod. Or with a lighter. You can also make these yourself at home by, dent with, by using dental... Stop. Little pro tip, you can also make these at home yourself. Next time you're at the dentist, ask for a handful of cotton rolls. Those are those... Uh, cotton pieces that they stick in your mouth while they're working on you. You can dip those in wax and you basically have the same thing. So, Tinder tabs. Okay, first things first, Tinder tab. Flip it open. Lighter. Lights right up. Now let's hit one of those Tinder tabs with a ferro rod. First we're gonna, again, fluff it open. Lights right up. The next Tinder item I keep in my pack are fire rounds. These are homemade. Get them out of the bag and I'll show you. Basically these are cotton makeup removing pads. 
that I dipped in paraffin wax. And they're completely waterproof. And what's nice about these is you just crack one open, break it in half. It exposes the cotton inside. And then you just light the cotton and it's sort of a self-sustaining little item here because it'll just continue to burn the paraffin wax. And one of these, a tab, will burn for a, a while. You'll get uh, several minutes of nice flame out of it. It's kind of like a round candle. Uh, you don't have to use the whole thing. You can just break off a section of it and uh, you can easily get it going with a ferro rod or a flame. So those are cotton rounds. I will probably do, if you, if you want, uh, post some comments or post a... If you post a request down below, I will do a video on how to make these, uh, but there are quite a few videos already out there on how to make fire rounds or fire biscuits. So, tinder rounds. Next up we have our, our fire biscuits. Break one open. That lights right up. That'll burn for a while, Oops, as long as you don't put it out. I'm gonna hit it with a ferro rod. Lights right up. Boom. The next tinder item I have is fatwood. Um, if you're not familiar with fatwood, it is usually uh, comes from pine trees that have died and the resin has settled in the joints and in the trunk of the tree. Uh, the wood, you can see, has this uh, so, sort of an orangey color to it. This is all resin. This is extremely flammable. Uh, if you smell it, it smells like turpentine. This is actually where natural turpentine comes from. And these trees are prevalent really all over the Northeast United States, across the middle of the country as well. I don't know if they have a lot of them in the South, but um, it's uh, pines, you know, it's an evergreen tree. It's a coniferous tree which means it has cones. Most coniferous trees have sap, but the pine sap is nature's fire starter. Uh, it's been used for probably thousands of years as tinder. And uh, what you can do is you basically shave it down into small pieces. And I, I usually bring a little bit with me in case I need to get a fire started fast. And this will catch a spark from a ferro rod or from a flame very quickly. And it'll light and, and burn very hot for a little while. It's got a a good uh, long burn time, and it'll easily help you get your fire started. So that's fatwood. This is something you can you can buy pretty much anywhere. You can find it in the forest, depending on what part of the country you're in. Fatwood. Okay, we got some fatwood scrapings. We're gonna hit it with the ferro rod. Lights right up. Next tinder item up is cotton soaked in Vaseline. Uh, these are usually people use cotton balls. These actually are more cotton rounds. I didn't have any cotton balls. Uh, but basically it's just some cotton and it's uh, impregnated with Vaseline. Easiest way to do it is just put some Vaseline inside a Ziploc bag, drop a bunch of cotton balls or cotton rounds or whatever you have. Um, in a pinch you can use tampons. Uh, just cut the strings off and uh, smear them around in Vaseline. The Vaseline partially, will partially waterproof them, although they won't be completely waterproof, so that's why I keep them in a, in a bag. But the Vaseline is, you know, is petroleum jelly, and that acts as a fuel which will burn. You'll get a long burn out of one of these, and it burns very hot. It's also pretty good in the wind, difficult to put out you know, in high winds or even the rain. So if you need to get a fire started quickly, cotton and Vaseline is a fantastic tinder. So that's cotton and Vaseline. Vaseline and cotton balls. Lights easily with a match or a lighter. Lights right up. Got the uh, cotton ball and Vaseline. Let's hit it with a tinder rod, or rather ferro rod. Lights right up. Next item up may be a little surprising. It's an alcohol prep pad. This is an ordinary alcohol pad. It is a cotton square, which is soaked in 70% isopropyl alcohol. This is highly flammable, will catch a spark or a flame very easily. 
You can even use a spark from a lighter that has no fluid in it. Uh, they light up very quickly. They don't burn for very long, but they do light very, very easily. And this is a very, very inexpensive item. You probably already have that in the house. You buy a box of, you know, a few hundred for a couple of dollars. And obviously it doubles if you need an alcohol prep pad. You've got one in your fire kit in case you have a small cut or you need to clean something. But alcohol prep pad is tender. Next item is an alcohol swab. You can open it up. It's a good idea to... You want to pull the fibers apart a little bit to give the spark something to catch on to. That should work, hopefully. And we'll hit it with the ferro rod. Oops. Get a little breeze here. Sorry about that. Here you go. It's hard to see, but it's burning. The last Tinder item I keep in my fire kit is a Zip Tinder tab. Um, the name of the company is Zip. Uh, these are made out of, uh, I think, compressed wood and some kind of accelerant. Uh, you just light the outside. This isn't plastic. It's some kind of some kind of other material. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But um, you just light the wrapper and it will ignite very quickly and you get a long burn time out of this. Um, almost as long as one of those uh, fuel tabs that you use in a small Esbit stove. So this is excellent for starting a fire very quickly. Um, it's great for starting fire in a, um, in a barbecue or a, you know, fire pit or even in your fireplace. But out in the wilderness, if you need to get a fire started fast, um, this is the way to go. Uh, the only thing is that ferro rod really won't start it. You do need a flame, but once you have the flame going, uh, this is going to last a while and you'll really be able to get your tinder going, especially if you're dealing with wet tinder or rainy conditions or high winds, any kind of adverse fire making conditions, uh, the zip fire tabs are going to be my first choice for tinder. And last but not least, and this is for all the marbles, thing one and thing two. A little bit of thing one. And then a little bit of thing two. Mix them together. Usually takes a second. Here we go. Fire. Yay science. Remember, if you can name the two items, the two substances in Thing 1 and Thing 2, please uh, drop a comment, like, and subscribe, and you'll be entered for our drawing. Considering the importance of fire in a survival situation, it's crucial that you keep and maintain a comprehensive fire kit. Remember also that redundancy is important in both your fire generating materials as well as fire extending resources. Two is one, one is none. And now for our giveaway. We're going to be giving away one of these really nice fire steels to one of our subscribers. In order to be eligible for this drawing, all you need to do is follow three easy steps. First, subscribe to our channel. Second, like this video. And third, post the substances that make up thing one and thing two in the comments below. We will be randomly selecting one subscriber from the comments in the next 10 days and we'll notify you of the winner shortly. As always, please like and subscribe, and please follow our channel for more videos. Thank you very much.